30 years ago today may have been the turning point for the 1990s Cleveland Indians. The team had just finished spring training and a few players got a little careless partying after the spring training session ended. Tim Cruz drove the boat right into a dock they were riding in and two of them died and Bob Ojeda was never the same since. He still suffers flashbacks evidently from the accident 30 years later. But within a couple of years, the, the franchise is reignited. You never want to think that that was the spark, but it might have been the igniting spirit for these young kids to come together and a couple years later be one of the greatest teams ever in baseball history, the Cleveland Indians. So let's look back on news reports from this sad day 30 years ago. Cleveland's live 24-hour news source continues. Steve Olin, ace reliever of the Cleveland Indians. Strike three call, the ball game's over. Along with his friend and teammate Tim Cruz, both considered to be a vital part of the Indians this season, meet a tragic death. The two, along with Bob Ojeda, another Indian pitcher, were ending their only day off from spring training with a fishing trip. Their high-speed boat ran into a dock. Olin was killed instantly. Cruz died early this morning. Ojeda will survive. He is in serious condition. Good evening. Teammates, coaches, and fans throughout the country must now say goodbye. This untimely disaster is sending shockwaves not only in the sports world, but also in just about every living room in our area. We have some special team coverage for you today. We're going to begin with Bob Stevens, who spent time with all three of the men in Florida just recently. Yes, I did, Wilma. They were three guys who were enjoying their last day off with their families at Cruz's rented house on a lake outside Winter Haven. They were optimistically preparing for what they hoped would be a dream season. For them and their teammates, well, two of them almost became Indians simultaneously, joining the leader of the bullpen. Bob Ojeda was the hired gun, a 35-year-old veteran whose two-fold job was to pitch a whole lot of innings as the second man in the starting rotation behind Charlie Nagy and to provide leadership to a fuzzy-cheeked pitching staff. His veteran attitude came out after he was rocked in his first spring training appearance. I don't like to go out there and give up seven runs, don't get me wrong, but it is spring training and we're down here trying to get in shape, trying to do what you got to do. The younger kids have a different role, you know, they're up here, they're down here trying to... Uh, trying to make a club, so to speak, but uh, at, at my point, my arm was, like last week, I was having some, you know, both shoulder blades were killing me. I felt great today. Didn't work out great. Ojeda had recently complained of tendonitis in both shoulders, but that was minor in misery to the spring his former Dodger teammate Cruz had gone through. Tim cracked three ribs in the first week of camp and had only begun to try to pitch his way onto the team in the past week. The two became friends with Olin, who had defied baseball logic by becoming the stopper of the bullpen without an overpowering fastball and a quiet, humble demeanor. He was just a 27-year-old kid who tried to chew record amounts of bubble gum and was looking forward to seeing his buddies through a season of growth. The big thing I was worried about is uh, keeping the bullpen together because we had so much fun last year and, and we just worked so good together as a unit and uh, they kept us together so I'm real excited about that. Of course the true tragedy is in more than baseball terms. Olin and Cruz each leave a wife and three children. And it is those families that are the focal point of the feelings of everyone in the Indians family today. Nev Chandler's been with that tribe family since the horrible news broke last night. Nev for the first time in a week a warm sunny day in Winter Haven today. The mood however was anything but. Yeah, the weather really belies the situation here in central Florida, Bob. Uh, in the 20 plus years that I have covered sports in greater Cleveland, this is easily the saddest and most tragic sports story that I have covered bar none. Everybody here connected with the Indians, including those of us in the media, are numb. We are in shock. We are just as stunned as the ball players. I guess you could really call this the ultimate team tragedy. It was the first sunny day in Winter Haven in nearly two weeks. It should have rained at Chain of Lakes Park. Following a meeting, Indians players left the premises in stunned silence, still in shock over the deaths of Steve Olin and Tim Cruz. We have to keep going. I know that, you know, the team is real down right now. And it's a tragedy. I know the family that, you know, it's, we have to help, you know, the family because I know that, you know, the Olin guy just three kids, 
right now and, and think close to, you know, that's the first thing we have to think about the family first, and it's kind of hard. The Indians have been a young, growing family. They've responded to this tragedy as close families do, relying on each other. As we drove home close to 3 o'clock, we called uh, back to the apartment. Close to half of our team was gathered in Charlie Nagy's room. The wives were in Steve's apartment, Patty's apartment, cleaning. The players banded together. They are with the families now. In particular, the death of Steve Olin hurts manager Mike Hargrove in many ways. Hargrove skippered Olin through the minor leagues and brought him to prominence as the tribe's closer. Steve Olin was like a son to those who knew him the best. Steve, uh, meant more to us than just being a pitcher. When we go out and get players, we look for players, obviously, that have talent. <clears throat> but we want good people, people that have a lot of character to them. People that, when things start flying, they don't start hunting for a hole. They stand up there and take it with you. And Steve was that type of individual, as was Tim Cruz. So here in Winter Haven, the grieving process has begun, and baseball has ground up. Orioles was canceled today. Tomorrow's game against the Mets. Likewise, it will not be played. Tomorrow night at 7.30 here in Winter Haven, there will be a memorial service with former tribe slugger Andre Thornton coming down from Cleveland to preside over the service. I think that's most appropriate since Andre himself, back in the late 70s, had a similar personal tragedy while he was a player losing his wife and daughter in a car accident on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. There is no telling how long it will take the Indians to get back to normal. Bob, it could be the entire season. We just have no way of knowing. Right now, the important thing is to get the families taken care of. There will be memorial funds set up both in the name of Steve Olin and Tim Cruz for the families involved. We'll have more details on that as the next few hours unfold. You know, that's a good point because here in Cleveland there is a hopeless feeling, I think, a feeling that there's not much that can be done uh, here, and hopefully there will be something that we can do uh, in the near future. Thank you very much, Nev. All right, Bob. All right. Uh, we will, of course, hear from Nev Chandler later on in the show, and uh, again through 6 o'clock and in a special we're going to have tonight at 11.30. Amazingly enough, this was almost a triple tragedy. We talked with John Franco of the New York Mets, a good friend of Ojeda's who spoke with Bob this afternoon. Ojeda mentioning that uh, had his uh, body been just in a little bit different position, a couple of inches one way or the other, and, and it would have been uh, all three of them oh, killed. Oh, my, what a so tragedy. It's, it's been tough, yeah. A reminder to all of us how fragile life is. And I think it does, indeed. Uh, perspective is a yes. word we overuse, yes. but certainly it, it fits here. All right, Bob, we'll mm -hmm. see you later. You Thanks. bet. Well, Indians fans have been hyped about the coming season because of the commitment by the team to sign players to long-term contracts, the construction of a new ballpark, and a feeling by many that this team could be on the verge of something very good. And now a dark cloud is hanging over all of this. News Channel 5's Alan DePietro is outside the Indians' home municipal stadium. Alan, I'm certain that the shock there at the gate A is just now starting really to set in. You're, you're right, Roy. It is just starting to set in, and it is going to take time, lots of time, for the uh, shock of this tragedy to lessen at all. You know, it seems as in Cleveland as though when one of the city's sports teams seems to be moving in a somewhat positive direction, a tragedy like this hits. Now, old Wahoo's up there tonight still sporting that silly grin of his, but believe me, folks, inside, he's hurting. This is a team that has seen a star player, Ray Chapman, killed by a pitched ball in 1920 against the New York Yankees. The only time that has happened in Major League Baseball, an on-field death. Today, flags at Cleveland City Hall are at half-mast, and Mayor White reflected on the fragility of life. Uh, I would hope that all of us tonight would recognize that there are six children uh, who are orphaned. Uh, and although we tend to look at sports players uh, with larger than life, they're still human beings. Uh, there's still a lot of pain and all the money uh, will not bring uh, them back. All the fame and the fortune will not bring them back. So I hope all of us would say a prayer for them tonight. County Commissioner Tim Hagan. Uh, stunned, uh, saddened, you know, and the promise of youth with a whole lifetime in front of them and, and good solid uh, human beings and great ball players that they think that's all lost. Uh, and you think about their families and the, the children. Well, we're going to have a, uh, uh, we're going to set up a memorial service 
uh, at some point here in Cleveland the next uh, day or two. And we're also going to be setting up a, a fund for the, uh, the, the two players. Now, the Indians asked that the, uh, that the fans wait until that memorial service is scheduled for Cleveland now. They'll have one in Florida, but they'll also have one in Cleveland before fans start sending any expressions of uh, sympathy and grief. And as uh, Dennis Lehman, the tribe executive vice president, said, that memorial service in Cleveland will be held the next day or two. Alan, you say uh, that just when uh, the sports teams seem to be moving in a positive direction, tragedy strikes, and we do have a kind of a history of that, don't we? We certainly do, Roy. You know, just to mention a few, uh, Don Rogers of the Browns dies of a drug overdose. The Browns' Ernie Davis in the late 50s dies of leukemia. In the late 50s, uh, Herb Score, the star pitcher of the Indians, is struck in the eye by a line drive and ad infinitum. Yeah. All right, Alan, thanks very much. Alan DePietro reporting from the stadium. Well, the authorities in Florida are now investigating this accident. They are trying to find out what led to the fatal crash. Our Ross Curtis is in Florida. He joins us from there live. Uh, Ross, where does the investigation stand at this point? Well, some questions are slowly being answered right now, Wilma, but others aren't. The number one question on a lot of people's mind right now was drinking involved, and that question is yet to be answered. Police do say today that they did find a number of full cans of beer in a chest on the boat. They also found a full liter bottle of vodka and had just a little bit out of it. And they did find one empty beer can, but the toxicology tests are not back yet, so it's early, too early to tell whether drinking did play a significant role in this fatal accident last night. Tim Cruz was driving the board, of, uh, of course, last night, and uh, the impact, I guess, hit the dock at head and chest level. It was a very dark night, and they were traveling very fast. When we got to the scene, we found the bass boat, which is an 18-foot, 5-inch Skeeter bass boat. It uh, was already pulled ashore by the EMS crew. When we inspected the dock, which is a 185-foot pier, we found three 4-inch posts sheared off. So the vessel went under the dock at a high rate of speed. Tim Cruz was driving the boat, traveling in excess of 50 miles an hour. But who was at fault? The dock jutted onto the lake in excess of 180 feet. It had no reflector, nor was it required to by law. The dock was illegal three feet above the water. Cruise boat was found with only two of three required lights on, a Florida violation. All the men were found in the boat. Ojeda will recover. Olin pronounced dead at the scene. And Cruz lost his fight for life early this morning. Did he ever really have a chance? Uh, it was our feeling when he first arrived that he likely had a non-survivable brain injury. Okay, Bobby Ojeda is expected to make a full recovery. He went underwent surgery for a uh, gash to the side of his head early today, but he is expected to be discharged from the hospital within about a week, according to a hospital spokesman today. They did find the boat with a throttle wide open. Potentially, with a 150-horsepower engine, that boat could do in excess of 60 miles an hour. Mm. So uh, that's certainly going to play a part in their investigation that is ongoing. No charges have been filed in this. Police are not sure whether they will file charges, but they want to get to the bottom of it find out what happens so it can be prevented in the future and our hearts certainly go out to the families of the two trot members killed last oh, night they absolutely do uh, any any word from bob ojeda i read i read that he was uh, conscious the whole time i realized there was surgery but has he put any light on the situation to what actually happened a uh, hospital spokesman says bob ojeda was informed this morning of what took place obviously he was very sad and he was conscious through the whole time but I think the real effect and impact of what actually happened last night hit this morning. He is conscious, as I expect, as said, that he will be discharged from the hospital in about a week. Very limited visitors right now, but hopefully he's on the road to recovery and a very traumatic experience as well. Omar. All right. Thank you, Russ. Russ Curtis reporting for us live from Florida. Well, almost everyone in Cleveland was talking about the Indians today, and the radio talk shows were devoted exclusively to the Indians' tragedy. As crushed as I feel, Greg, I can imagine how these ball players feel. We have to support them. Conference Greg Brenda talks to sports the, uh, fans for hours every day, usually about stuff that uh, doesn't the, really John matter Mark much. Do sports talk. It's fun. It's uh, it's not real at times. It's living in a fantasy world. All of a sudden, uh, now you have to deal with uh, with life's reality, and here it's it's death. I mean, it just kills you. I mean, I started to cry. At my wife's like, "What's the problem?" It's just. You worked so hard for a team that you can that you can back up, and now you got these young kids, and they want to play, and you just get so close, and it's like family. It's like God. It's a public tragedy, 
taken very personal because everybody identifies with professional athletes, ball players, football players, basketball players. It's, it's like these players and these teams become part of their lives. And uh, when something like this happens, it touches a lot of people very personally. And I think that's what we're hearing from some of our, our fans today is that um, these public guys who most of these fans, you know, have either not ever met and have only seen them from a distance somehow believe in themselves that they have this personal relationship with them and now they have to deal with it on a very personal way. I put a challenge out to all Cleveland Indians fans. Let's put for 10 home games in April at least 25,000 fans in the stadium for those 10 games to get these kids on their way. To it's really a terrible tragedy for the city. No it really about. is. Well, our team coverage today of the tragedy that has hit the Indians will continue with us here on Live on 5 at 5.30 and then again at 6 o'clock. We'll be back with more news in just a moment. Casey, where exactly are the players this afternoon? They scattered. They came together last night when they first got word, and nobody called anybody. There are only two players staying at the Holiday Inn. Everyone else is at condominiums all over the place. But as soon as they heard the news on News Center 8 last night, shortly after 11 o'clock, they all somehow gathered at the Holiday Inn, and then the wives all went from there over to Patty Olin's house and began helping with the children and cooking and cleaning immediately. It was really something special to see how this team came together. Casey, of course, we have been living with what happened at the end of this family outing, but give us a little background about what the guys decided to do yesterday. Well, we got down here on Thursday and we interviewed Bob Ojeda in the weight room with Tim Cruz and Steve Olin. And then Bob was scheduled to pitch on Friday and we wanted to get some B-roll for our interview. He wasn't going to throw. So we sat there and they talked about their one day off, their lone day off. It's a very odd thing. Cy Bynick told me in 32 years as a clubhouse man, they have never closed the clubhouse. I said, Cy, I can't come in here and shoot a stand-up. He says, under orders, everybody off campus. And they were talking about spending the day catching bass. Well, it rained, so they pitched horseshoes and they took the kids horseback riding, but the rain ended. And when the rain ended, and Tim, as you know, as a fisherman, when the rain ends, the bugs come out. So they went on the lake at dusk. They weren't on the lake more than five minutes. Now, this is an 18-foot bass boat with a 150 horsepower motor on the back. This is what they use in bass tournaments, and they were going close to full throttle when they hit that dock. Casey, we understand now that there was alcohol found aboard the boat, but that very little, if any, was consumed. Can you shed any more light on that? Absolutely. Uh, John Hart uh, mentioned this morning that uh, the team strength coach was there last night. He was not on the boat, and uh, he told John and Mike that there was not alcohol involved. Uh, today, on board the boat, they found seven beer cans. Six of them were full, one was empty, and a full bottle of vodka that was still sealed. So there was no evidence of too much alcohol consumption at the time. They had only been on the, on the lake, Tim, for five minutes. Casey, what's next now? Well, next we have to pick up the pieces. We have to see how this young team responds. They're going to come out here tomorrow morning and just practice. They've already canceled their game with the New York Mets. I think a few guys want to try to get back into the rhythm of baseball. In fact, coming up tonight at 6, you'll hear from Carlos Baerga as the team is dedicating the season to Tim Cruz and Steve Olin. Casey, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, we'll see you back at 6 o'clock. Right now, New Center Tony Pipitone is going to join us. He is live at the lake, the scene of the tragedy. Tony? Tony, can you hear us? All right, I think we're going to have that report from Tony just a little bit later. All right, of course, back here in and around our city, news of the Indians' losses coming as a shocking blow to millions. Lori spent the day with some fans who are especially tied to the Indian success, and I'm sure there's that deep sadness there as it is everywhere. It really is everywhere, and of course, this dreary day seems to only add to the grief. Most Clevelanders are sports fans to at least some degree, so this news is especially disheartening for us Indians fans. And yet, first and foremost, we are all human beings, and this comes as a tragic loss any way you look at it. And a 2-2 on the way struck him out with a curveball.
Lonnie Smith out of there. Cruz recalls. Third hitter. Got the left-handed Reimer on deck following Sierra and then downing after that. Two. Struck him out. Oh. Flags are flying at half-mast through the drizzle and raw chill of a tragic day for Cleveland. And all of the money, all of the batting titles, all of the high uh, averages that they have uh, cannot make up for the loss that these six children especially and these family members and the Indians in this city uh, now feel. It's a sad day for us. Uh, it's a sad day for the crew. I suppose the rain and the dreariness of the day is appropriate. Dave Frey is used to seeing the Indians home empty. That's when he and his groundkeeping crew of five do their work. But today it's more. Today it's an eerie void. Especially with uh, pitchers and relievers, we, we get to sit with them a lot of times in the bullpens during the game, um, depending on the situation. So you get to know these guys, you know them during practice. And it's and for times. those guys that Frey and his crew were feeling the excitement build toward opening day. Now the feelings are of sadness. Uh, Steve Olin, of course, has been here a while, so uh, that is more difficult. He's really a, a fine individual, uh, a very hardworking individual, very earnest. He really had his whole future ahead of him. It's, this is a, uh, that's part of the shock of it. You expect this guy back, and that's just the way it's going to be. So that's the first thing we talked about when we got in the trailer. Just a few blocks away at the site of the new Gateway Stadium, workers building the future for their Indians are fighting against the day's weather and the tragic news. It's got everybody kind of down. We got a guy in our crew that uh, I guess was a friend of his, and he's pretty shattered by it. It's, it's a setback. It's that cloud over their head. That's what it is. Uh, but I think they'll be all right. They'll be all right. They have a nice team, good nucleus. They'll be okay. We'll make it, huh? Yeah, we'll make it. Clevelanders always make it. There is strength sometime in adversity. And the best thing for all of us as a community and a team, I think, in these times is for us to band together and to not only remember these bad times, but to remember uh, the good times as well. And although we won't soon forget about this tragedy, there will be more good times with the Indians. Tim and Eleanor, the head groundskeeper, tells me that we will have an opening day. It will be one of a lot of mixed feelings, but he's going to have the Indians home ready and waiting for them no matter what and waiting for all of us. Mm -hmm. And I think spiritually and physically a lot of arms are going to be around those players and their families. Yes. And they're going to want their home ready for them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Lori. Thank you. I understand that we have established communications with News Center 8's Tony Pipitone at the lake where the accident occurred. Tony, are you there? I am. We're about 45 miles east of Orlando in the town of Claremont. Little Lake Ness Nelly is the name of this lake. This is where Tim Cruz was last night. And investigators from the Florida Fish and, and Freshwater Fish Commission are here wrapping up their investigation for the day at least. They've been diving here trying to pull things out of this lake, including evidence of alcohol consumption. Now, as you may have heard, there were some cans of beer on the boat. One of them opened. There was some vodka on the boat, a bottle that was partially consumed. We also have just learned that one of the people on the boat had a blood alcohol level of 0.17%. In Florida, 0.10% is considered the legal limit. But we do not know if it was Tim Cruz's blood alcohol level. He, of course, was operating the boat. That still remains to be seen. But the investigators are looking, obviously, strongly at the alcohol level. I'm also told we, we went and looked at the boat today, and we saw the speedometer where it was frozen at about 39 miles an hour. The boat was picking up speed as it crossed over this lake counterclockwise direction, heading across the lake to where Tim Cruz is leasing a house here for spring training. It ran into that 170-foot-long dock, and it could not have been a worse place to hit them. It hit them all across the forehead and the chest. The, ob the injuries were obviously traumatic. The latest we have on Bobby Ojeda is that he is in stable condition. The others, of course, died either here or at the hospital soon after. Back to you. Tony, thank you very much. There are a few people who know the pain of this tragedy more than Diana Munson, who was married to Indians great Thurman Munson. She suffered a similar loss. You remember Munson was killed at the peak of his career when his plane crashed at the Akron Canton Airport in 1979. Diana Munson joins us tonight to reflect on the loss of Steve Olin and Tim Cruz. Diana, when you heard the news, even though it's been 14 years, the memories had to just come flooding back. Well, I didn't realize that there was still so much emotion left, but when I saw the pictures of the young men today and realized what their families have ahead of them, it, it came right back. 
It's hard enough when a young woman loses her husband and when children lose their daddy. When you're in the public eye, I'm, I'm imagining that must be even tougher. How did you get through it? Well, I'm not sure. I, I've tried to reflect on that. Um, the children, if anything, my children helped me because you have to be involved and you have to put food on the table and you have to stay busy. So in a way, the children are going to be a godsend for the, for the wives because they will have to stay active whether they want to or not. Diana, I have never personally seen such an outpouring of fan support as we've seen here in Cleveland and in Florida today. How much did that help you and do you think that that will be a key to their coming back into a more normal life? Well, it, it helps tremendously because you realize that you're not grieving alone. Although your loss is perhaps more intense than anyone else's, you know that the world is grieving with you. And the fan letters and the cards and the masses that will come through eventually will really help the wives because they'll have time to reflect on how their husbands were loved. You just mentioned the fan letters, but is there anything else that we as the public should be doing that we can do to help the families? More than anything is just to show that you care, not to sometimes people feel it's painful to bring up the the loss or or talk about the the husbands they need to do that they will need to talk about them in the coming months and i think just letting them know what they need will be there for them is important and we can't forget about bobby ojeda he survived and, and he may be carrying the greatest cross of all in this thing be, other than the families it's got to be very tough on him too mm -hmm. i think he's going to have a, a real tough road because he's going to you know have to reflect back on what happened and why he survived and exactly. i think he will have some real he will need a lot of support also i'm sure diana munson thank you very much for being with us tonight thank you Coming up on News Center 8, we have a lot more news heading your way. President Clinton holds his first news conference since taking the office. We'll tell you what he had to say. Plus, is it a miracle drug for migraine sufferers? If you need relief, please grab a paper and pencil. We might have the answer. You're watching WKYZ Channel 3. And now, news from Connie Deacon and Dick Fagler. Exclusive Doppler 3 forecasts from Amy Haston, plus Jim Donovan on sports. This is Channel 3 News. We'll get over this. I don't know about the crucial. Indians manager Mike Hargrove voices the grief and sympathy that all tribe players and fans are feeling tonight as two players die in a freak boating accident. Good evening. Connie is off tonight. I'm Lisa Calagrossi, and this baseball and human tragedy is our top story. Dead tonight are pitchers Steve Olin and Tim Cruz. The third player in the boat, Bob Ojeda, is hospitalized. Steve Olin is best known of the three among Indians fans. He'd become the team's top relief pitcher in recent years, and he leaves behind a wife and three children. Tim Cruz was new to the Indians, having played the last several years with the Los Angeles Dodgers as a long relief pitcher. He also leaves behind a wife and three children. Tonight, 35-year-old pitcher Bob Ojeda is listed in serious condition, but recovering. The veteran Ojeda was expected to be the tribe's number two starting pitcher this year. Target 3 reporter Paul Arlowski will join us from Winter Haven, Florida with the latest on the investigation in a moment. But first, we go live to sports director Jim Donovan, also in Winter Haven. And Jim, this is the worst tragedy to hit Major League Baseball in quite a while, isn't it? Yes, it is, Dick. It's been a long day, and it is certainly the darkest day, I think, in Cleveland Indians history. A lot of long faces around here today. We're at Channel Lakes Park, the home of the Indians, this spring, where there was no baseball today, just a team meeting for the Indians. Their game against the Baltimore Orioles was canceled, but when word drifted back late last night that their teammates had been killed and another one seriously injured in that boat accident, well, the Indians were a team that was in absolute shock. Steve Olin had become a real fixture for the Cleveland Indians. Olin, indeed, was a real cornerstone, one of the 18 players that the Indians had committed to a long-term contract. And now, a great guy in the clubhouse is gone. As for pitcher Tim Cruz, Cruz was a long shot to make the Indians team. 31 years old, over from the Dodgers, but Mike Hargrove thought he was going to make it. Here were some other emotional moments from the press conference. We've got, as I said, good people. Their first concern, as is the whole organization, is what can we do for the Cruz family and the Olin family? We'll get over this. I don't know about the Cruz family. Yeah, it's difficult. This might be a subject. The question has come up in both I think we're trusting our instincts. I have spoken with several 
club officials that have been through tragedies uh, within their organization and uh, have attempted to uh, get, gather as much experience as they can give me, and uh, which I have done and uh, which we are we're putting into what it is that we do as we go along. We want to start the healing process as soon as we can. Um, there will be enough reminders that Steve and Tim are no, no longer with us without us adding to that. That healing process will begin tomorrow. The Indians have canceled their game tomorrow with the Mets, but they will hold a team practice and then a memorial service for their two dead teammates tomorrow night that is just involved with the Indians players and the baseball community. Target 3 reporter Paul Orlowski has joined me here in Winter Haven. And now, Paul, the question is everywhere. Why did it happen and how did it happen? And the word alcohol is being mentioned. The word alcohol is being mentioned, Jim, but right now, of course, we want to be very, very careful about that because uh, a bottle of vodka partially uh, gone uh, and some full beer cans were found on the boat, but there's no evidence right now to suggest that they had drunk any of that. Now, that will uh, come down the line when toxicology tests are complete, so that uh, still uh, lies ahead of us. What we did is collect information from both the boat manufacturer down in Kilgore, Texas, to try to piece some of this together, and as well, the uh, state organization handling this. That's the Florida Game and Freshwater Fish Commission that's handling the investigation. Divers searched Little Lake Nelly for evidence. Clues to a springtime outing turned tragic. We're looking for pieces of the boat, uh, pieces of the dock, uh, to try to piece together uh, what happened. Investigators say alcohol was on board the boat. What we found in the vessel was an ice chest with uh, filled beer cans and also a bottle of vodka. But they were filled, they were not empty. Investigators also say the boat was traveling at full throttle before the collision. The boat, an 18-foot skeeter, probably went under the 170-foot dock. Cruz was behind the wheel. Debris was scattered several yards beyond the end of the dock. A rescue worker talked briefly to Ojeda right after the accident. The only thing that he was really saying is, is they thought they had hit a sandbar. They didn't know what they hit because it was dark on this lake. It was hard to see that dock. Even when we were out there, you really didn't quite visualize the dock at the time. Cruz had a home on the small lake. It's not far from the Indians complex here in Winter Haven. Maybe it's appropriate on this day that such a black cloud hangs over the Cleveland Indians that it's begun to sprinkle. They're putting the tarp on the field. And uh, Lisa and Dick, one of the key things that they really have to do is, to, uh, the investigators have to do, is talk to Bob Ojeda. But uh, the mood here, people all talking in, uh, in very hushed voices, the flag behind us at, at half staff, and, and certainly a cloud over the Cleveland Indians here tonight. Thanks, Paul. Of course, we'll hear from you again tonight at 11 with more on the investigation. The ripple of sorrow over this tragedy is being felt by baseball fans from coast to coast, but it hits the hardest here in Cleveland. Channel 3's Joe Mossbrook shared the grief with some Indians fans. People throughout Greater Cleveland were stunned by the news. At Ruthie and Moe's Donner at East 40th and Prospect, everybody was talking about the tragedy. It was the only topic of conversation. It's just a terrible thing for Cleveland. You know, especially uh, as the Indians are, uh, you know, starting a new team and and it's just uh, devastating. We think of young people as being invincible, and here we have people in their 20s who are just in a tragic accident, and it, it, it's terrible for them and their families. And it's also a, really a devastating blow for the Indians. A guy 27 years old with a kind of bright future that he has, and, 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 I, and I really feel for his wife and his three small kids. It's a tragedy. Side armor Steve Olin was not only the Indians' ace relief pitcher, he also enjoyed doing wacky things. Olin on the left, and the Indians dug out last year, and fellow pitcher Kevin Wickander challenged each other to a bubblegum chewing contest. Each managed to squeeze 71 pieces of bubblegum into his mouth. Uh, I was gagging on 71, so that was uh, pretty much maxed out, but you never know. <laughs> With all that sugar, what do you want to do now? I want to take a nap. <laughs> go run some steps, Stevie. You know? Gee, I'm going to go jump into the upper deck. Olin and Wick Ander more than doubled the previous record for bubblegum chewing. We uh, will claim an official major league record and a uh, world record. Fun-loving Steve Olin, dead at 27, will be missed by Cleveland fans. Joe Mossbrook, Channel 3 News. In baseball, as in many other activities, there's an expression that experience is the best teacher. And in this time of mourning, the tribe is also relying on experience to teach the team how to deal with this loss. Channel 3's Leon Bibb tells us that experience comes in the form of former slugger Andre Thornton. We view them as if they are superhuman, doing on the field what we dream of in the mind. They are lords of the in and outfields, 
sometimes seemingly invincible. So when tragedy comes, it catches us off base. Fifteen years ago, tragedy struck former Indian Andre Thornton. An auto accident claimed the lives of his wife and child. Deeply religious, Thornton knows many are caught in mid-stride by a change-up pitch, which leaves them off balance, off time, and shaken. Before we can understand life, we need to understand death. Uh, and it's being able to know that, uh, yes, this body will go into the grave, but thankfully, I have hope that there is a resurrection of life. Because of Thornton's tie to the team and his religious beliefs, the Indians ask him to speak with team players and families. Over Cleveland Stadium and Skyline, the March gray skies hang heavy. Indians baseball, not here yet, will be uneasy and difficult because of deaths of Olin and Cruz. Baseball is a game of exacts. Ball or strike, fair or foul, safe or out. We accept these unbending rules. But when players through unexpected death leave the game, there is confusion over where to throw the ball or anticipate the next play. And I would only hope that this might be a time that God might reveal himself, not only to our city, but especially to the hearts and minds of those families who are there. Though they preside brilliantly over the baseball diamond, when tragedy strikes them, it cuts into us too. Olin and Cruz will no longer stride the mound. Sorely missed, they are, but not forgotten, for they played the game. For Channel 3 News, I'm Leon Bibb. Andre Thornton now works in the investment and sports management business. He's also involved in a Christian family outreach group, and he will leave tomorrow for the Indians' spring camp. We'll continue our coverage of the Indians' tragedy when we come back. We'll meet a woman who had become very close to fallen Indian pitcher Steve Olin and his family. Most of us are still in a state of shock as to the events and to the loss it's very difficult to put into words what all of this means this baseball season dick jamie vodka wants to begin a full-time job as nanny for the olins she had met them when steve olin was called to cleveland from the indians farm system she was a ball girl then for the team, the Olins were new in town. I was working for the Indians as a ball girl, and um, I saw that Steve had a little girl, and I knew that they didn't know many people in the Cleveland area, and I told them that if they ever needed a sitter, then I would watch Alexa for them. Jamie Vaca babysat three-year-old Alexa for the Olins, and then later watched Alexa and the Olin twins, who were born just last August. It turned into my job this year as their nanny to watch all three children, help Patty when she needed it, um, help her out of the games, take care of the twins and Alexa, going to games, uh, going on the road trip to California, stuff like that. They were excited about having twins. Nice family. Very nice family. <laughs> he was a family man, cared a lot about his family. Patty's doing fine. Um, the Indians are taking very good care of Patty, making sure she's okay. And the kids, I'm okay. going to um, wait to hear from Patty, and if she needs my help, then I'll go. Later today, she talked with Mrs. Olin, and about 10 minutes ago, Jamie Vaca was scheduled to leave for Florida. She'll stay at the Olin's residence there to do what she can to help. Likely, that will be considerable. Okay, thank you, John. Lisa? If you follow baseball, it has probably already occurred to you that the last accidental death of an active player also had a strong Ohio connection. Star New York Yankee catcher Thurman Munson died when his plane crashed near his home in Canton. That happened on August 2nd, back in 1979. Even though he played in New York, Munson often said it was important to him to keep his Canton roots. At one point, he even requested a trade to the Indians. Well, up ahead on Channel 3 News, Eileen McShay, who's in for Amy Haston, will have our Doppler 3 weather forecast. And later in sports, we will go live again to Jim Donovan in Winter Haven for more on how the Indians will deal with this tragic loss. We will do what we have to do because we are who we are. Um, we will be okay. We want the families to be okay.
This franchise is grieving the loss of two very special people, uh, Steve Olin and, and Tim Cruz. A boating accident devastates the Cleveland Indians. In football, the Niners won't halt Pierce Holt from leaving. We'll have a report from the owners' meetings. Plus, a look ahead to an East-West showdown in the NBA between Ewing and Barkley. With the news of the day, March 23rd, this is SportsCenter. Good evening, everyone. Alongside Bob Lee, I'm Jack Edwards. Two families grieve and all of baseball mourns the loss of two young men. A third, their teammate, is expected to make a full recovery from his injuries following surgery. Now, the Cleveland Indians confronting a tragedy with many dimensions, but the compelling one this evening is a personal one. It is a tragedy without parallel in baseball history. Pitcher Steve Olin and Tim Cruz killed last night in a boating accident and teammate Bob Ojeda hospitalized in serious condition. In the midst of a spring where Cleveland season ticket sales are three times that of last year and a new stadium is taking shape, all of sports tonight is focused on the deaths of two young men, both husbands and fathers. Steve Cypress is in Central Florida where authorities are trying to determine details of what happened last night. Steve? Bob, the Florida Game and Fish Commission is uh, conducting the official, official investigation, is trying to find out exactly what happened almost 24 hours ago at Lake Nelly, which is located 25 miles north of Winter Haven, Cleveland's temporary spring training facility. After a day of picnicking and horseback riding with their families on the 40-acre ranch belonging to Tim Cruz, Steve Olin, Bob Ojeda, and Cruz decided to go fishing. In darkness at 7.30, the 18-foot bass fishing boat, owned and driven by crews, crashed head-on into the end of an unlit pier sitting three feet above the water. When we inspected the dock, which is a 185-foot pier, we found three four-inch posts sheared off. So the vessel went under the dock at a high rate of speed. Cooper would not estimate the speed at the point of impact, but he did confirm that the throttle was almost wide open and that with the 150 horsepower motor, such a boat can reach speeds up to 60 miles an hour. All three men, with Olin seated between Ojeda to his left and Cruz to his right, were still in the boat when Al Morgan arrived on the scene. Olin was already dead, but Cruz was alive when Morgan reached him. He was in real tough shape. Uh, he wasn't coherent, wasn't talking. He moved around a little bit, but uh, he, he wasn't really coherent when we got there. The Orlando Regional Medical Center received a request for a helicopter evacuation at 8 o'clock. It arrived at 8.20. Cruz was admitted at 8.49. Uh, it was our feeling when he first arrived that he likely had a non-survivable brain injury. Cruz was pronounced dead at 5.40 a.m. Tuesday morning. At South Lake Hospital in Claremont, Bob Ojeda underwent surgery to repair a serious scalp laceration. Tuesday afternoon, he was listed in serious but stable condition. At Lake Nelly, game and fish officials are still trying to determine what happened. Had the boat been 10 feet to the left, it would have missed the pier. Nighttime fishing is common, said Cooper, and he didn't know if the pier had reflectors, though it's not required by law. There were uh, alcoholic beverage cans in the vessel and also a bottle of vodka in the vessel. Were they full? Yes, all the cans were full. But one, was there one empty one? Yes, we did find one empty beer can in the vessel. There is no open container law in Florida. Alcohol consumption is legal on a boat, but operating a boat while impaired is not. Blood toxicology reports on Cruz and Olin will not be available until later in the week, said Cooper. In Winter Haven, the Indians canceled games scheduled for Tuesday and Wednesday. A memorial service is being planned for Wednesday evening, Tuesday morning, John Hart spent his time with the team. Uh, this is a very young team. Uh, it's a team that's come together, come up together, and uh, it's a very close team. And uh, uh, certainly uh, the players were, were shocked. Uh, there was a, a lot of conversation, good conversation. Uh, as we went through the meeting, uh, a lot of prayers were said. Hart added the Indians are looking into the establishment of memorial funds for the families of Tim Cruz and Steve Olin. Bob? Steve, what's the latest on the condition of Bob Ojeda? Bob Ojeda reportedly today was aware and alert, and he visited with family, friends, and teammates. Doctors expect a full recovery, and they say he could be released in several days. Okay, thanks, Steve. We'll see you tonight on the season premiere of baseball tonight, about 10.30 Eastern time after our game. Jack? Bob, as dawn broke in Winter Haven, the Indians held a team meeting, one with little talking and with many tears. The Indians have made a concerted effort to build a feeling of family within their franchise, and the bonds were evident today as concern for the Olins and the Cruises was the only sentiment expressed by the thunderstruck colleagues of the players who died.
Our ball club came together this morning to talk about this tragedy. We've done that Most of us are still in a state of shock uh, as to the events and to the loss. Uh, it's very difficult to put into words what all of this means. And you know, the team is, we are down right now. And it's a tragedy. I know the family that, you, you know, it's, we have to help, you know, the family because I know that, you know, the all in Gallos, three kids, right now and, and team crews too, you know, that's the first thing we have to think about the family first and it's kind of hard for us. We've got, as I said, good people. Their first concern, as is the whole organization, is what can we do for the Cruz family and the older family? We'll get over this. I, I don't know about the Cruz family. Yeah, the shock and numbness felt at the Cleveland Spring Training Complex was echoed time and again around baseball today, including moments of silence. We ask you to please rise and bow your heads for a moment of silence for Steve Olin and Tim Cruz and hope for the hopeful recovery of Bobby Oyen. All of us in the Dodgers were stunned. Timmy was a tremendous young man. I loved him very much. He always wanted to pitch. He pitched in 60, 70 games for me every year. Tremendous competitor. People, you know, tend, don't tend to forget that, you know, we're not invincible either. You know, we're human beings and, and uh, tragedies do happen to us. Uh, it's, it's a sad thing. Uh, I, I just spoke to Bobby and, uh, you know, he's sitting up and he's doing all right. But, you know, it's, it's just something that, that's hard to deal with. I know Steve for about five years. Uh, we played in the organization together. Uh, we roomed on the road in AAA. We basically did everything together. Um, we went golfing together. We did everything. Uh, You're kind of a family man. Yeah, Steve was a good family guy. Um, like I said, he has three kids. Uh, his little girl, Alexa, and my little boy, Travis, they basically grew up together. Alexa's birthday was the day before yesterday, and she had just turned three. And I mean, it's just, it's just tragic that it had to happen. And we showed you the moment of silence at the Florida Marlins game. Baseball's acting commissioner, Bud Selig, is asking all clubs to have such ceremonies in spring training and also to fly their American flags at half-staff today and tomorrow in memory of Steve Olin and Tim Cruz. The deaths of Olin and Cruz come only two weeks before the first day of the 1993 regular season. Games and results are of little importance to the Cleveland Indians right now, but the team is going to have to go forward. We bring in baseball analyst Peter Gammons, now live from Florida, Peter, how are the players handling this? Well, I think, Jack, what we have seen is just how extraordinary these young guys in the Cleveland Indians are. I mean, this was the youngest team in baseball last year, but they really have some exceptional young guys. For instance, Charles Nagy, who was living very close to the Olins, brought a whole bunch of the players and stayed with, with Olin's wife until 6 in the morning. I mean, several players volunteered to go out and be the guy to speak to the press. Carlos Bayerga happened to be the guy. You don't get that kind of situation. They have people like Kenny Lofton and Albert Bell, very intelligent, very strong young guys whose reaction in this has really been extraordinary. Peter, what will the long-term effects be on the Cleveland Indians? Well, I really think that what we're seeing here is a team trying to grow up. Now, I don't happen to think this would have been a great year for them because there's still that, that, that hump to go over. But you look at this team now, they're very much like the Brewers that grew up in the 70s with Robin Yount and Gorman Thomas and Paul Molitor and those guys, and the twins of Puckett and Herbeck and Gaetti and all those guys who grew up in the 80s. A lot of young guys growing up together in a small town. The Indians have really spawned a very close family. Have over half of the players in that team are living in Cleveland. I think in the long run, this is just going to bring them together. And next year, when it's really time for them to, to move up in the, in, in the standings, I think you're going to find that they may have matured a great deal from this. And they're going to be a lot better, a lot faster than anybody ever thought. All right, Peter Gammons, thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to your perspective tonight on baseball tonight. Well, baseball fans know what uh, relievers Steve Olin and Tim Cruz did, but not many of uh, them knew what kind of people they were. Those close to Olin and Cruz expressed 
grief amid their shock today. One friend of the untimely loss said, quote, we never really get enough of guys like this. Cruz grew up in Tampa. Only last Friday night, his high school retired his number. Cruz's boyhood friends say there was a question about his ability to succeed at every level, but that his feel for pitching and his competitiveness got him through. Cruz was a serviceable middleman. It took him eight pro seasons to get to the majors for good. His best year came in 1990 with the Dodgers. In 66 appearances, he had a 2.77 ERA. The Indians signed him as a free agent two months ago. Cruz leaves a wife and three children. He was 31. Steve Olin always got to the top. Wherever he pitched, he made it to the top 10. His friends say Olin was not the greatest athlete in Beaverton, Oregon. Even when he was setting a record for complete games at Portland State University, he was no major league sure shot. After three years in the pros, he was a triple-A all-star within one save of a league record when the Indians called him up. After two years on the majors minors shuttle, Olin arrived with four straight saves in the span of one week in July of 1991. In 1992, Steve Olin was in the top 10 in the American League in four relief pitching categories, including relief wins and save success percentage. But it didn't go to his head. Olin still hung out with his buddies in the offseason and trained with his former college team until it was time to head for Florida. I gave a big hug before he left. And I was afraid that I embarrassed him, but I'm glad I did. I'm sorry. Steve Olin was 27. He is survived by his wife, a daughter who turned three last Sunday, and infant twins. The games will begin again soon, and the rhythms of baseball will carry the players towards summer, but the sense of loss is not going to vanish on opening. We will examine the issue of how pro sports teams grieve and cope with the loss of a teammate. There are other stories to consider on this edition of Sports Center on this Tuesday, including the San Francisco 49ers and their decision on matching Pierce Holt's free agent offer sheet. And the confrontation tonight in Phoenix between two of the NBA's top teams and their front court stars. It's the Knicks and the Suns. Sports Center continues with football news in a minute. to be here but I mean I know that's what he would want to be have us back you know he don't want us to mourn anymore Cleveland trying to cope tonight on Sports Center the Indians remember their teammates the NBA comes down hard suspensions and fines totaling over a quarter million dollars A day of decision for the Sox and Bo, and oh no, a live visit from the March Hare. The story's making news this Wednesday on SportsCenter. Good evening and welcome to SportsCenter. He's Charlie Steiner. I'm Bob Lee. And at the Cleveland Indian Spring Training Camp today, there is still numbness and shock 48 hours after the boating accident that killed Steve Olin and Tim Cruz and badly injured Bob Ojeda. But the Indians took the field today for the first time since the tragedy, and while the autopsy reports pronounced the cause of death for Steve Olin and Tim Cruz's head trauma and their funeral arrangements were in the process of being completed today, the Cleveland Indians were trying to come to grips with the extent of the tragedy. The Indians went back to work this morning, although it wasn't easy, but they knew it was something they had to do. Steve Cyphers reports from Winter Haven, Florida. At 10 minutes after 9, the Indians took the field for the first time in three days. And for the next three hours, it looked like baseball, and it sounded like baseball. But the chatter and enthusiasm did not come naturally. It was a little forced in the beginning. I think I would be lying if I didn't uh, say that. I agree with you. Uh, you could feel it, but after a while, things did pretty much get back to normal. It's going to take a, a lot more time than this. To appear normal and to be normal are not the same, especially for Kevin Wickander, who, when he lost Steve Olin, lost his best friend. I'm not feeling with it very well at all. He was out. 
you know, not even a baseball related. He was you know, my best friend. He was the best man at my wedding. And more, the reason I am where I am today is because of him. Off the field, he taught me more about life than on the field. It was Wickander who met Olin's parents at the airport following the accident. It was uh, probably the hardest thing I had to ever do other than cleaning out his locker. Because it's just like it's not fair. He's going to not come to the park and play with us anymore. I mean, it's a game. It was a game, Stevie. He wasn't worried about money, big contracts, the fame. He just loved playing the game. I mean, everybody always dogging about how he threw and he would never make it to the big leagues. He was such an underdog. And, such an inspiration in my life because of that. On the field, the loss of Olin and newcomer Tim Cruz significantly hurts the Cleveland bullpen. But when the season starts, Power says the loss will not affect the way they play. I don't think any of us is ever going to run uh, maybe two less sprints than we're supposed to, or we're throwing in the bullpen instead of throwing 10 minutes, throw seven. The hardest thing is just knowing that Stevie's not going to be able to pick up the ball anymore. That's the hardest part, you know. But I think we're going to find strength within ourselves, like Teddy was saying. Tonight, the team will hold a private memorial service. Most, if not all, of the 28 major league teams will be represented. Dodger manager Tommy Lasorda is scheduled to attend at the request of Lori Cruz, Tim's widow. And former Indian Andre Thornton, now an ordained minister, will lead the service. We pay honor to two guys that were very important to us personally. And a um, memory that won't be forgotten. The Indians play their first exhibition game since the accident tomorrow at home in Winter Haven against the Orioles. Tim Cruz will be buried in Orlando on Saturday. The funeral for Steve Olin will be on Sunday in Portland, Oregon. Up.